Hi, this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. And I have with us a great local organization, the New London Community Orchestra. And they are wonderful because they do a whole bunch of things for us here in southeastern Connecticut. Um, I don't know that they go into Rhode Island, but um, it's not a big trip to come into New London and hear them play. So they are, have an adult program, which is a community orchestra that has people from all over our community. And even more exciting is that they do some programs with uh, local public school children, giving kids the opportunity to be introduced to music at a young enough age where they can learn to not only appreciate music, but learn a whole bunch of skills that make them you know, just great productive members of society. And um, I have with me the president of this organization, Tom Clark, and Tom and I have had many discussions about how we feel, how I feel, which is that music, not only does it tame the savage beast in us, but it teaches kids at an early age fabulous kinds of skills that help them when they're 35, when they're 15, you know, to the day they die. So I'm a great fan of yours and a great advocate for the programs that you do. Thank you. So why don't you tell our audience something about the orchestra itself and then, of course, um, you have an upcoming concert, and mm -hmm. we want the whole community to come out and show support. So if you want to talk about a little bit about that, that would be great. Thank you. Yes, our concert uh, coming up is uh, December 17th. It's our holiday concert at the uh, Crocker House Ballroom, which is in downtown New London, uh, right across the street on State Street from City Hall in New London. And although the entrance to the ballroom itself is on the side street, Union Street. Mm -hmm. So that's 7 p.m. December 17th, which is a Thursday evening. So please all come out, because uh, what the con what we are doing is having fundraising concerts for our program of free lessons for kids, uh, which we uh, provide at two locations now in New London. One at the uh, RMS, our MMS, the Regional Multicultural Magna School and uh, which is for elementary school children and our recently started program at the New London Community uh, Library, Public Library, uh, for uh, middle school kids. We've been doing the program all together since 2012, I think it is, starting out in the elementary school with a plan all along of extending to the middle school kids when we could, uh, when we could arrange it, which we have because with the uh, uh, cooperation with the Public Library in New London, they're providing the space, and we're providing the uh, instruments, and uh, with the help of uh, generous um, supporters and grant funders, we're, we're able to supply uh, you know, professional teaching for the kids at both locations as well. So it's something that we're happy to do, and it's wonderful because it gives the orchestra a mission um, to go along with, uh, with the enjoyment of playing for the public as well. So please so come out. Yeah, yes, come and out. Your, your orchestra is a full orchestra, right? It's not only string instruments. It's uh, it's all the rest of the uh, the other members of the orchestral group. Yes, it is. This will give us the opportunity for David to get in okay. here because the music director has more to say about that kind of thing than I than I do. So for sure. I have with yeah, me David yeah. Bradley, yeah. who is the conductor, and I believe, if I remember correctly, a former music teacher. That's right. So tell us a little bit about yourself and and the um, and the stuff that you play. Well, especially for this holiday party, what's coming up? Well, it's less about me and more about the orchestra, obviously. Um, the orchestra started in 2011 uh, as a stringed orchestra. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, violins, violas, cellos, and basses. And uh, about, what, three years ago, I guess, uh, we had uh, a couple of woodwind players come along and uh, express an interest in playing. So mm -hmm. uh, we got some music that would uh, accommodate flutes, as well as strings, and then we added uh, clarinets, and we added oboes, and uh, uh, last year we added brass, and uh, this year we've actually added a percussionist now oh, for the first time. So okay. we have what is really a chamber orchestra. Okay. It's not a symphony by any stretch, and all it's right. certainly more than just a string orchestra because we have all the sections represented now. So you have like 40 players, something like that? We're, well, the goal is 40. I believe we're at 31. 35, right? Okay. 35 total 35, on yeah, paper, yeah, 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 if everybody comes. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a fine yes, functioning group, yes. um, especially the addition of uh, 
several fine new string players mm -hmm. and uh, our new percussionist, of course, and now we have a very fine French horn section also, mm. which is a very hard thing to find right. on the community level. Right. So we're very pleased with that. And it, it balances out. The music I selected this time is uh, eminently playable by the musicians that we have. Okay. That was important. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Sure, you want a, as full of sound as you can get. Well, yeah, and then when there are holes in the music, <laughs> uh, it, it, it falls upon me to arrange right. kind of like custom patchwork, if you will, uh -huh. that uh, they, we call them cues. Okay. And uh, we provide cues for the various instruments that we do have that cover and sort of paper over the holes that are missing from instruments that we don't have. Okay. All right. It's one of the reasons why David is it's such a it, uh, it's just difficult. a it's a great yeah. uh, match for us to have a conductor music director like David who is able and willing to put in the, put in the time to 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 make things work with sure. whatever instruments we have at the time. We've been growing, yeah. You know, from a string orchestra originally to a fuller orchestra, but it's but it's like most community orchestras. The cast varies from season to season. Right. Sometimes people just can't do it because one one of our best players, for instance. She ended up having to teach a course that it conflicted this year, mm. this, this season, so she can't she can't join us, unfortunately. But do you uh, look for yeah. people to come and audition for your community orchestra? Well, audition is uh, kind of a technical term for it. I, I have yet to conduct an audition. Okay. The players that have come to us have almost universally been competent to mm -hmm. just step right in and, okay. and play. Okay. Are you looking for, you know, like, so do we put a call to out there to musicians? Absolutely. Right. Uh, this, this year, going forward, we are in dire need of a couple of good clarinet players. Oh, okay. And there are a lot of clarinet players out there, uh, which is what kind of surprised me when we lost the two that we had uh, to uh, work and personal conflicts. Um, it seemed like it would be easy to recruit a couple more, but it has not been. Really? So perhaps maybe the word just didn't get out, okay. and uh, we should uh, take this opportunity to say, by all means, uh, come, uh, come and play clarinet with us. Now, how would, how would someone who's uh, listening actually come and play clarinet? Would they contact you via email or uh, the web? Or, well, you know, how would you like people actually contact you if they actually hear this message. Well, that's more Tom's bailiwick, okay. but uh, we do have the website and we do have email mm -hmm. and uh, basically word of mouth is, is what has it's gotten mm -hmm. our people to come to us and it's worked very well. So um, Now, I am a clarinet player, but I'm awful, so I would not recommend myself. But I do know it is, um, it's a wonderful, fun instrument, so, and it, and it needs, uh, it needs a nice orchestra to, to, to really put in that sound, so definitely. So all you clarinet players, and I know there are ones out there much better than I. We know you're you, out there. Yeah, you're out there. Yeah. Come on and, and join the orchestra because it can be, can be a lot of fun. And we're easy to find online. If you just go to nlcommunityorchestra.org, uh, you'll find our website and you'll have, inf we'll have information about our uh, rehearsal times and, and location and when our concerts mm -hmm. are. And, other, other various and sundry pieces of information for members and new members. We are a dues-paying organization, however, but uh, it's not. It's, it's, sure a, it's, it's a very minimal, small. Yes. It's a very small amount of money. I'm sure so, it's, yeah. it's minimal, but uh, that that's wonderful. Now, when you're choosing, you have this wonderful holiday program coming up. So, how do you go about uh, choosing the selection um, that you want to put on? I mean, because every year it's a different selection. Well, that, I have to qualify that because it's a little bit like uh, setting up a bridal trousseau, uh, <laughs> something old, new, borrowed, and blue. And uh, we have all of the above represented in this concert. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of what we call chestnuts in the music business that uh, we like to drag out every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not the kind that you roast by an open fire at Christmas right. time, but uh, they, um, <clears throat> they're pr tried and true pieces of music that are... Uh, appropriate for the season and uh, I always try to add new music as well to challenge the orchestra but also to entertain our audience. Right, right. Do you have people that come year after year? Do you have a core of... Uh, you mean players? Uh, no, supporters out supporters. there. Supporters. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, def you know, definitely. People who really look forward. That's, to, uh, yeah, that's one of the great, that's one of the fun things about us 
organizing an orchestra like that, mm -hmm. you find uh, people that respond to it, and then they come out um, uh, concert after concert. So you start seeing the same faces right. over and over again, and right. they're really enthusiastic, and be, it becomes like a group of f friends that are that are yeah, that, that are, are supporters. So that's right. a really gratifying part of the. Of and the are, usually, do you find the supporters are people that themselves have people who play music? Is that is that a common core, or is it just could, people just like? Just like to support your group. Well, there's all sorts of reasons why people mm -hmm. love music. I so I suppose I suppose some of them have play, some of them play, some of them have played when mm -hmm. they were uh, younger. Um, and sometimes sometimes it's just the love of music, and of course the it does truly does work together having the educational program for kids as well as mm -hmm. the or as well as the uh, the community orchestra programs because. Sort of one works with the with the other. We, we we gain supporters both ways, both for just the music that we do, and also for the programs that we offer for children, because people really do respond to that, which is what gratifying aspect of doing this work, for sure. So it, it, when you work with the kids and you give them the free, it's all it's all string string instrument lessons mm -hmm. at school, or do you have to? Or do the kids go somewhere else, or how does it actually work out? Yeah, good question. Um, because the nuts and bolts of the situation are is that we have uh, two programs, one at the uh, Magnet School in New London, okay. and uh, we are we offer our program as part of the after school program for kids that they have there. Okay, so they have a program that they call uh, Magnet Kingdom, which is starts after school, mm -hmm. and so the kids stay over. And so there's a built-in core of children there right. that this is uh, an additional enrichment offering for their after-school program. But it's also open to the other kids at the Magnet School as well. So we have sort of two populations. One, one the children that are there uh, as part of the after-school program, and the other, other children from the, from the school who come in. Um, the, parents, the parents pick them up and drop them, drop them off and pick them up uh, for the program after, after school. And so there are... You know, so it's part of an after-school program there, and the, and also with the library, it's part of the existing after-school uh, program that they okay. have at the, at the public library. They have existing uh, middle school uh, after-school program um, run by the new by the drop-in center of of New London, actually, mm. um, and uh, which offers you know, a variety of programs. This is just one of theirs, and they so they're help, very helpful working working with us as well as the public library staff. Is it's there? They have um, a community rooms down in the lower level of the library, which we're utilizing for our for our programs. Mm -hmm. um, so it starts. At, it's an, at the library. It's on Wednesdays, four to five. So there's two sessions at the library, for example, uh, because it's not good to have. It's not like. You know, the, you know, these middle school, elementary school kids—you don't want to. You can't have lessons stretch out too long because they do. You know, yeah, they get it, tired, it has bored, to. It has to be a discreet, right, a discreet right. session. So we work right. with each group for half an hour. Okay. So we have two sessions at the library. Um, we actually have three sessions at the uh, um, elementary school, the RMMS Magnet School. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, we're hoping to expand the library program to the similar. Uh, Sort of um, schedule that we have at the at the elementary school. We started out the the middle school program a little bit slowly um, due to our funding. We weren't sure how much funding we, we were going to be mm -hmm. able to get for it. We committed to doing it before we had actually had any um, uh, you know approved grants with just the money that we had from our supporters and and so mm -hmm. on. So we decided that we could we could commit to doing it and and we could afford it at a at a very relatively low level anyway, but at least get it started. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, when we've applied for other grant funding, we we're, we're lucky that we got a grant from the um, through the state actually the uh, right. Commission of Economic and Community De Development that goes towards that middle school program. So we're now gaining confidence that we can mm -hmm. expand that. <laughs> um, just two sessions per week for the kids at the library because that was just one. That was wow. just one per week. Yeah. And is it individual yeah. uh, lessons or is it uh, group lessons? Is how does it work? Thank you. Yeah, it's small group lessons. So okay. there's typically six kids per per you know per per per, 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 right. per, per session. Yes. Yeah. And how do you get the uh, how do you get the teachers the music teachers? Well, uh, we. Um, Put out a, put out the, a call, mm -hmm. uh, an advertisement in the newspaper. At one point, uh, there are various uh, sort of um, bulletin boards that we've you know, put the call out for, our own ma our own mail mailing list, email list, that kind of thing, to mm -hmm. try and to, you know, to, to hire teachers and so on. You know, it's 
uh, so that has standard. not been a problem getting teachers to teach these kids. I wouldn't. We well, we've been. We have. You know, we've been lucky that we have a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Our teacher, um, he's part time with us. Is uh, Jim Hunter. He's a longtime uh, local musician. Okay. A lot of people know Jim. He plays with Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra right. as one of their bass players. Mm -hmm. And he played. Of course, he plays multiple instruments. Um, so he's teaching uh, our kids on the on the violin on the violin now. Mm. Um, so he's we're wonderful. It, you know, it's been wonderful uh, working with Jim. Um, he's one of the more experienced and trusted people, uh, you know, in our whole area as a music teacher. He's been doing it for a long time, and he also he's you know multi talented. He mm -hmm. has his own jazz group oh. groups, I should say. I think okay. he has more than one. Um, right. He plays at the. Um, he plays locally. I'm not sure if I should give names or whatever, but he, you know, he plays. He plays <laughs> places locally, uh, for sure, as well as in the Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra. And I should say that we we don't really compete with the uh, Eastern Connecticut Symphony mm -hmm. Orchestra either. I mean, they're I mean they're um, another kind of orchestra altogether. I'm not sure how to how to describe well, that's the a, difference. What I would yeah, consider the yeah. difference between a community orchestra and a professional orchestra. Um, I don't know whether they play pay dues into some kind of. Uh, well, it's a symphony compared right. to our chamber orchestra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're a professional orchestra. They, their players come as far away as from uh, New York mm -hmm. and close to Boston in the area. They come from all over. They have professional players. They're, they have. A, it's a wonderful, wonderful orchestra. Right. You know, and they I play uh, here yeah. also in New London. They play in so, London. Exactly. I'm a subscriber. I go. I go there. I go there regularly. I think it's it's wonderful. Another difference there too is that they can afford to pay their players. Right. If we need four clarinets, let's say, yes. for a particular work, you put the word out and four clarinets come, they get paid, yeah. they play the concerts and they do. But yeah. where we are volunteers, yes. we're relying on the goodness of everybody's heart to right. come Who out and support us right. and, and play. Right. Yeah, we would be nothing without our volunteer musicians. So they're, they're, that's they, they the right. Right. Abs right. Well, that's, that's, that's the yeah. sense I would get from just yeah. the yeah. word community orchestra means mm. that people volunteer. But it's a big commitment to play in an orchestra. I don't care how small the orchestra is, uh, you know, when you play chamber music, it's a big commitment in terms of uh, learning your piece and then working together uh, in an orchestral setting. Absolutely. So. Well, any, any artistic group like that that relies on more than one person, mm -hmm. or a sports team either. Right. It, it matters not. When you have more than one person together, they have to, they have to co-opt, cooperate. Right, and then of course you're supposed to be the dictator as the conductor. I wouldn't say dictator, <laughs> but uh, the facilitator, let's say. You That's know, and, right. and there's also another aspect to, to uh, having a community orchestra. It's a, it's, um, it's a benefit and asset for the, for the entire region. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the individuals that we have playing with us, uh, they're largely, if not entirely, uh, professional uh, people working for uh, for Pfizer, for Electric Boat, for um, you know, for the major corporations in, in the area. They're entirely professional, um, and it helps. You know, it helps the entire region to have assets like that to right. attract, you know, right. to attract skilled, wonderful people to work at these companies. Because it's, it's part of the envelope of having right. a rich, diverse place is having beautiful, a community beautiful. orchestra. And those people have an outlet yeah. to, right. you know, use another talent that they may, they all have. Right. That's what they have in common is right. that musical ability. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, they're giving back to the community in that respect. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a great supporter of, of the whole idea of music and kids. I mean, I, I'm I using the example of my daughter who started out at age six playing the cello in, um, in Windsor Public Schools. And then she was good, and uh, the program started to get less and less in the public schools. And we went to the, to the Hart School, up in, in the Hart School of Music in Hart, uh, well, actually, West Hartford, where they have a wonderful pre-college program for kids, and, and music is that universal language like mathematics, and there's lots of research about how mathematics and music sort of work together, and they teach the kids the right kind of skills. They teach you how to work by yourself and then be part of an orchestra. And my daughter had this, these fabulous experiences. I mean, she played at the Sydney Opera House as a kid. She went to competitions in Chicago and Syracuse, um, and then made a decision when she was in a senior in high school that she didn't want to do this for a living, did not want to play the cello six hours a day for the rest of her life. But now that she's a uh, physician and, and established, I keep on urging her, she has her cello, to go and you know, check out a, a community orchestra. 
She's done in our area, I guess, or, or we, would, we would have her as a cellist, uh, absolutely. right? Absolutely, <laughs> she's in Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo, so, and, okay. and they must have, they have a symphony, so I'm sure they have some kind of community orchestra. And I keep on saying, oh, yes, yes. And she looks at her fingers, because you know, you gotta get those calluses back <laughs> Before you be, if you're going to play the cello or any other of these kinds of instruments, so definitely. So music is is important for kids to have, and and you have through this community orchestra and the other things that you do, you make these kids, um, you give them a gift they don't even understand yet, and their parents sort of maybe they understand, but it's a gift that will keep on giving for the, their entire lives, and most of them will never become professional musicians, but they still learn skills that just just help them, just help them in life. Whether, you know, the engineers, the, the medical researchers, the people that you have on your orchestra is because, you know, some mommy or daddy or grandma or somebody, you know, started them on uh, thinking about playing music as probably as kids. Yeah, it, it, it really does um, you know, offer a lot to kids. Um, part of the reason why we started the orchestra was because some of us who had had children growing up who's, and saw you know, how much music added to their lives, and it gave it just gave them, and, and our cast, our daughter, um, and we felt it really helped motivate her in in so many so many different ways. Sure. And it gave her a, a group of um, peers that were also highly motivated, and it it you know it just changed her educational experience altogether, and as well gave her. Um, and another important thing, as far as, as an entree into into um, the college world, mm -hmm. because when she um, she became so invested in her music when she was a junior and senior in high school that she was you know she wasn't just playing you know with a school orchestra she was playing with uh, three three orchestras at one <laughs> point, and then uh, then she started giving lessons to other kids. Wow. Uh, for other she was playing. She was a violist, so she was giving viola lessons for, for other other kids when she was growing up, and so the, her her investment in music and her passion for for what she was doing it isn't just was it, 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 it it's no longer just about. Um, it's something you're doing because you're because you enjoy. It's mm -hmm. be, it becomes something where you 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 have a, enough of a passion for it that you're automatically giving back to the community, mm -hmm. both performing and also using your own talents to bring to teach other children. Right. Okay, so once you start having a passion for something, it it moves the cycle into into the other generation, into more and more kids. And so we saw that sort of wonder of that happening with our own child. That was you know so. And in the discussions about starting this orchestra, that's one of the reasons why we said, if we're going to start a community orchestra, which is we're still relatively new, we just started what three, four years ago now. Mm -hmm. You've um, accomplished a great deal. That we need, we need to to be motivated also mm. towards giving back and, and having that part of a part of our program. That's sort of how we how we got. And that's we got that's going. wonderful. Yeah. Now you're basically just centering right now on the violin for the kids. Is that correct? Right now, violins. Right. right. Viol we have violin lessons. We have um, uh, most of our instruments are uh, been uh, donated by generous uh, uh, folks from the community, mm -hmm. um, as well as actually other violin shops. I have a violin um, shop in in uh, New York, for instance, who. Donated, I think, eight or ten uh, instruments for wow. us at one point. Okay. We, um, I have a, you know, I'm a violin maker and and uh, repair, um, and so I, I, you know, have some other friends among mm -hmm. the violin mm -hmm. uh, maker world, and so Ron Hugler in in in, uh, in New York decided he had some instruments that needed some repairs that he wasn't going to get to anytime soon. So he, you know, he generously decided, agreed to donate them. And so we have um, two luthiers that are associated with the orchestra, myself and Chris Charlin. And so we have, um, between the two of us, you know, the sort of legs to, to do the restoration and repair, to get these instruments back up in running condition when they're donated. So, that's which a, is, that's, it's, a, that's yeah, wonderful there. That's yeah, a great compliment. So we have, uh, so it, it, it allows us to, you know, to leverage the resources of the orchestra. To provide a program at uh, you know a very very affordable cost to compared to what um, it could be yes, <laughs> it yes, could yes, be yes, for sure private private lessons yeah, yeah. but your goal is actually to to 
expand beyond violin to get into viola, right. to get into cello, maybe even bass. All those hard for right, to yeah. Bass. It's yeah, it's a yeah. Iter it's a it's a step by step process. Right. There's iter iteration to it. We started out with the violins. Um, because we had the violins, for one thing. Yes, right. <laughs> we had the violins. To the musicians, uh, right. so we had Musi the, yeah. the musical instruments, right? Right. So we were able to to get mm. the donations for for the violins. But uh, you know, as time has gone on, we've also had donations of some cellos, so which, mm. we, which we've also restored and repaired and got ready to for use. So we now have enough cellos to start a cello section. Okay. Okay. So we're um, we're hoping to do that uh, sometime soon. We have to, you know, we have this. You know, we have concerts, we get donations, mm. you know, it's like any, anything else. We have to ch pick an appropriate time to be to make sure that we have, if we start a program, we don't run out of funds. So, no, that's right. right you don't so, want to promise what you can't deliver. Right, yeah. So yes, that's, yes, yeah, we're, yes. we're almost there. We're almost there as far as, far as starting a cello program. Is right. part of what you do with the kids, do they actually get to perform uh, publicly? Well, they, we have what we call uh, performance parties for the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, at the end of each, uh, at the end of the s sessions, like for instance, the, at the magnet school, the other magnet school kids are invited to come, you know, come and uh, watch the programs we have. Right. We have, and we have uh, photography, videos, of some of that, st sure. some of that stuff going on. Sure. Um, and uh, what one of what. One of the, another thing, which of course we hope to do, is have them play with the, with the adult orchestra as well. Oh, and with, we, the, yeah, with the community right, orchestra. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, we're working. We're working. That's, we're working. That's towards, a dream I have. Yeah, we're right, working. Of course, of course. We're working towards that. It's difficult because we're only two, three years old, and working with elementary school kids, you want you want them to get to a certain level before you can they can play with the adult. Uh, yeah, orchestra. you want to, you want yeah. to show them in their best light. So but the want... time is also limited. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. got two or three years worth of instruction, and mm -hmm. during that time, if you can get a cadre together that can hold their own with the orchestra, even with a special arrangement by me. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but we have yet to be able to get them further, far enough along sure. rather, uh, at, in that time frame. Right, so now how old yeah. is the youngest kids who play uh, with the with your group there? So we have, we have um, one or two third graders at the, at the Magnus School. Okay. So we're starting, so we, you know, we're starting them as young as, as grade three. Okay. And then we have up through actually at the magnet school program, you know, we have middle school. And we actually have two high school kids there as well. Oh, okay. That, uh, and how many nice, children do you nice actually have engaged in this program so far? Let's see. It's um, seventeen at the oh. magnet school, okay. and Quite then another thirteen at the library at this point. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It has grown. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I guess yeah. it's like word of mouth. People hear about it, and you know, the parents are probably quite supportive of you know giving kids something really constructive as an alternative to stuff they could do after school, so. Right, and the, of course the library is, is, has been very supportive. They help, mm. spread, they help spread the word for the library uh, program. They, they're the one that produced the press release, the one in the paper, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, you know, they're, they're the ones that they're the ones putting right. in the effort. They're to, a great community yeah, resource. Right. They yeah. do, uh, you know, just a tremendous job doing all kinds of activities mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the community. They take that role very seriously. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful uh, operation going on there at the New London Public Library. Mm -hmm. Now I can't say enough about the folks. That's Good great. things about the folks there. They're just wonderful. Is the high school have an orchestra? They have a band. They don't have a symphony. They don't, they don't have, have orchestral. They do not have what they call orchestral music at the okay. high school. At the high school right is now. Is that then? Is that a further program? You expand the uh, the middle school, then you go to the high school. And That's possible. That's uh -huh. possible. Um, right now, there things are in flux in New London because they're talking about this arts path, arts uh, and music path. A music pathway mm -hmm. um, is one of the triad of magnet school approaches in in New London, and uh, so it's it's sort of it's in flux. If they're if they're having a high school program, mm -hmm. are they going to have strings as, as orchestral music as as right, part of that? Right beyond the band. Yeah, part of that. Uh, I don't know. Which right. is, if know. they're ha so if they're doing that in the high school, if they do end up having an orchestral music program, we could be we would be then a feeder. Mm -hmm. For that program, because we'd have kids coming through elementary and then middle school, right. and so they would be ready. They would have players that would have had, uh, you know, enough uh, previous training to be able to fit into a program like that. Are yeah. the kids staying with it? I mean, you've been around. They've been around. You haven't been around all that many years, but are the beginning kids still with you? Um, actually, the the because the. Uh, we don't have any of the kids that first started with us mm -hmm. with us right now. Okay, they have moved on to middle school. Okay, okay. there um, we have heard from them. We see them around occasionally. Uh, like for instance, we have 
I think it's two at the Isaac School. Mm -hmm. They don't have orchestral music at the Isaac School either at this point, um, unless they heard anyway. Uh, and but uh, one of the players that we had there, Ty, who just you know sort of progressed by leaps and bounds. We she um, has joined. They have uh, they have a group over there, and so she mm -hmm. she's been able to continue her violin playing, okay. not as part of orchestral music, but they have a you know a group uh, where they, she plays with. They have. Mm -hmm. Various instruments, uh, guitar, you know, violin. Right. From what my understanding is that she's she still uh, has a has a way to, to continue playing over there at the Isaac School. So there, so, so they of course you know, every, all of these uh, they're like a charter school, right? You know, that because they everybody does what they can with the resources that they right. have. It's Which a big, it's limited, right. It's a commitment. Limited, yeah, sure. it's it's a commitment to start a strings program, but you know they they do what they can with the kids. Okay. Yeah. So and yeah. but your goal is to get those little kids from third grade and right up to high school, right? Yeah, exactly. School, for right. them to can continue yeah. and yeah. you know maybe some of them will actually even go to music school. Who knows? Could be. Yeah. yeah. If if it turns out that the uh, sort of like uh, arts music pathway in mm -hmm. the New London schools does not include orchestral music then at some point we would that's would be would be, uh, would be in addition to our call to, to have right. high school program as well right mm -hmm. right that's wonderful that's great so talk a little bit more about your um, concert David on the 17th give us a preview of what kind of music we'll be able to hear well as uh, I am usually trying to do is to provide a variety of Mm -hmm. a potpourri, if you will, mm -hmm. of music so that uh, it, it interests the greatest variety of concert goers and also gives the, di the various musicians something different to chew on as well. So we have, uh, we have three pieces for strings only. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is uh, by Vivaldi, uh, one is a, a miniature symphony by William Boyce, and... Uh, um, I have the list. We have the, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I can't even remember what the third one is now. How's that? Uh, oh, the uh, Pastoral Symphony from Messiah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a nice uh, introspective kind of a piece. And uh, then the rest of the music is uh, in, with varying combinations of the other instruments, woodwinds and brass and percussion, uh, from uh, classics like the Skater's Waltz and uh, the uh, Farandol from the La Lazienne Suite of Bizet to uh, the uh, holiday pops things like the Christmas Festival. And uh, I did an arrangement of Santa Claus is Coming to Town okay. for the orchestra uh, based on the availability of the instruments that we had to work with again. Yes. And uh, that's, uh, you know, it's something for the kids as well as for the the young at heart as well. Mm -hmm. And two okay. Leroy Anderson pieces because we're doing that's the Christmas, right. Christmas Festival in sleigh ride and sleigh yeah, ride, sleigh ride. Oh, yes. those yes. are so, uh, yeah. grafted on well we did christmas festival uh, last year too mm -hmm. but that is an absolute must for any uh community orchestra okay. worth its salt really and uh the sleigh ride of course is an all-time favorite it's it's an interesting sidelight uh, i was looking to pad the concert <laughs> and uh, i recalled that we had done sleigh ride two years ago mm -hmm. so uh, I asked Tom if uh, we mm -hmm. had it in the budget to uh, to buy the music for Sleigh Ride, and he said, well, it's available online for mm -hmm. a modest price. So uh, we went ahead with it and uh, downloaded it, uh, and uh, our librarian copied us parts uh, from, from her computer, and uh, we distributed them, and I got that piece up and running almost to performance level in one session. Wow. I felt really, really good about that. That's great. Uh, the orchestra loves a piece anyway, but, and they always play better what they like. Of course. Uh, but um, it, the, the group's facility is, uh, is vastly improved over the years, and we're able to do these things now. Why don't you is talk about the piece that the piece that you didn't get to we didn't get to do? Well, the, Are you big, sure we want to put that out there? <laughs> yes, yes. So the interesting, it'd be interesting sidelight well, about I, how these I things work. I had a brainstorm last yeah. summer. Uh, I wanted to do uh, a medley of tunes from the movie Mary Poppins. Okay. And it based on a, an arrangement that I did many many years ago for a, an elementary school chorus. So I, I took a song without words, if you will, and uh, transposed it into uh, instrumental. And it turned out to be a nine-minute long arrangement okay. 
uh, incorporating six of the well-known songs from the movie, right. like Chim Chimmery mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Let's Go Fly a Kite and uh, some of those, uh, Super Califragilistic. Oh, yeah, 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 and, and people yes, will yeah. tap their yeah, feet, you yeah. know, and, and sing along under their breath, perhaps. But it turned out that uh, the copyright laws mm. are such that uh, we can't perform it without a prohibitive amount of money being spent right and then we lose the right to use the arrangement forever mm. on top of that mm. so we'd have to pay a one-time fee to use david's own arrangement we have to pay um disney essentially the one time the one-time fee and then they own the work that david outright just, that, that david, david did without paid. having his name on it right. so he loses right he loses oh, the right to his work it's just an interesting sort of caveat or way that yes you know, yes the way these, so these work, music yeah. is a business after all right right <laughs> so, so in my will, I will uh, stipulate that some orchestra play this and hang the expense. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also have the great success that uh, Tom is looking for, where you have the uh, orchestra members come year after year, come back to play with you? You mean pl the musicians? Yes. Well, this is only my second year. Okay. But in my four years uh, that I've been with the orchestra, we have had a... a considerable number mm -hmm. of repeat people. Right. Uh, the important thing is that you keep as many of the old horses as you can, right. and the even more important, we're attracting more and newer and better players. That's wonderful. So you think it's mostly word of mouth, somebody's playing. And they well, essentially, know it's word of mouth, but also TV shows like this. Sure. And uh, uh, the interpersonal relation of the musicians themselves uh, I found that uh, we sprung uh, one of our players from another community organization uh -huh. who decided that he would rather play orchestra music than band music. Right. And uh, right. we are the beneficiaries of that. Sure. So all the better. Yeah, we can uh, walk if I can in. find those clarinet players. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get walk-ins. You know, we have people that find us online. That, okay. you know, they moved out with, you know, a number of folks have recently, of our new players have recently moved to the area. Have uh, again been hired by uh, Electric Boat, mm. uh, other companies like that, sure. and they have played throughout their entire educational career and when going to college and so on. And so when they move to a new area, that's one of the things that they look for is there an opportunity for them we to play. We fill a niche between yeah. the performance, uh, the professional performers, mm -hmm. and the non-performers, the people who like classical music and listen to it on the radio, right. or buy CDs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this vast number of people, at least we hope it's vast, mm -hmm. that are competent players, they love music, they just need a, a place where they right. can be with peers mm -hmm. and do what we're doing. And I guess in some sense is for them to improve themselves as musicians, giving, you know, having this opportunity. I, you know, I having even, been an educator, the improvement thing is very important to me personally. Mm -hmm. You I certainly mean, don't want the music to sound worse after a rehearsal right. than when you walked in. Right. No, well, but, you know, I, as I said, I'm a terrible clarinet player, but I did learn more and more as you become a part of a group. First of all, you get some, sometimes you just not only get you, you're actually, you're competitive. I mean, that was my mindset. And so if there's a clarinet player, my goal would be to be as good or better. You know, it's like sport in that sense, is that you want to be competitive. And competitive is actually, it's understood and, and it shows because you can hear a better sound. I mean, you break less reeds playing that cello. <laughs> or that, strings. Uh, yeah, that clarinet, the better you get, and you want to be better than the guy or gal sitting next to you. I know for sure, even when I was young doing this, that was certainly a goal of every player, especially if you're motivated. Uh, I have to qualify mm. that. Okay. I think there are people that, that, like you are describing who want to be in the first chair. Mm -hmm. And we have people that want to play first violin, for example. Mm -hmm. I have other people that are perfectly content to sit in the second violin section okay. and noodle away. Right. And then I have, God bless them, the kind that will <laughs> say, Put me where you want me. I'll be fine, you know. And you know they will. Yes. We yes. have some excellent, excellent players that are that are that are like that. They're just willing to be put wherever they, they want. Okay. If you want them to play first violin, second violin, and the back of the section, or the front of the section, I'm just here to have. I'm just here because I enjoy doing this. Use me however That's you think right. is most and appropriate. The very fact That's that they're wonderful. still there yeah. means right. that they are enjoying it. Oh, absolutely. Yo, you mm. have to you have to mm. love it because you do put as much time as they come in to rehearse with you. You know they're at home. 
um, spending hours rehearsing. I mean, you just you can't. I sure hope they are. You know, you don't. <laughs> they you are. Get, they you hear are. that <laughs> orchestra? They are. They are. You, you just don't get to be decent <laughs> unless you keep on uh, playing at it. And then a good conductor will pick up the pieces. You know, the little things, the little mistakes that you make. Well, that's where being an educator comes in because mm -hmm. then you have to put your finger on it and somehow you have to invent on the spot mm -hmm. a way to fix that problem. Right, right. There's an anecdote about that. Um, one of the great com uh, conductors of the Boston Symphony, uh, I've forgotten which one, which great one it was, <laughs> but uh, uh, he was conducting uh, a Mahler Symphony, I think, and uh, the bassoonist was get hitting a wrong note. Mm -hmm. And the conductor said to him, uh, press the whisper key and put your second finger of your left hand uh, on that key as a half hole. These are all technical terms. Right, sure. And the bassoonist did what he was told, and he played the note perfectly in tune. And after the rehearsal, he said, I've been playing the bassoon for almost 40 years, and I didn't know that fingering. <laughs> You're never too old to learn. Well, no, oh. but just the fact that that conductor could come up with a, a with quick a fix like right. that, exactly, practically exactly. out of thin air. But you think of the of the level of expertise mm -hmm. where a conductor who is not a bassoonist would know that fingering, right? No, or at least be co courageous enough to try it. Yes. It's Tell amazing. us a little bit about your background because I I, uh, I think our audience would be interested in learning a little bit. Well, about I you. I took my bachelor's degree at the University of Rhode Island in music education, mm -hmm. and I spent my entire professional career in the Newport, Rhode Island public schools. Okay. And I taught everything you can teach in public school uh, music except junior high school band. That's the only mm -hmm. thing I never did. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, of course, you have to go back uh, to school and you know get your advanced degree, credits, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I went in, uh, I didn't want to go in education. I wanted, I wanted to be a conductor. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they let me kind of write my own ticket, where it was a combination of the required courses, uh, electives, and then uh, workshops and, and special projects, a lot of special projects. And they granted me a master's degree in performance, but in conducting. Mm. Not playing an instrument, but right. playing the instruments right. under a stick. Okay. Which is something that I, I consider myself a natural at. Uh, and. And now I finally have an, an outlet for myself, so I'm <laughs> yeah. one of those community people too. What was mm. it? What you were a musician as well? What was your instrument? Oh, I played the cello from grade five. Ah, uh, okay. And then I taught myself how to play the trombone. Ah. And the double bass. Wow. And a... now I'm playing electric bass, uh, bass guitar that is, uh, in a jazz band, oh. part time. Okay. And. Uh, uh, you know, versatility is, is a very good thing. I've, some people say you're a jack of all trades and master of none. Mm -hmm. I'll never make a lot of money playing, but I certainly can fill in any anywhere you want. I, I have found that people, even even someone as poorly uh, as poorly played as I did, the clarinet. I also played a second instrument because I played the accordion, um, and I find and I you know I over the years I've met professional musicians, and inevitably they play, they don't play just one, one they may play for a living, but then they play two or three. Many do, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, right. you but become really versatile. Yeah. Actually, I was a better accordionist than I was a clarinet There's, there's another. <laughs> maybe, we maybe have to have an accordion section for the new. There's for another the music, musician's joke community. about that, too, you know, as long as you brought it up. That is, uh, there are two frames in the cartoon. One is uh, St. Peter up in the clouds at the pearly gates. And he's saying to this uh, person, welcome to heaven, here's your harp. <laughs> and the other picture shows this great black furnace of inferno <laughs> with black smoke and everything. And there's the devil. And he's saying, welcome to hell, here's your accordion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do say the one good thing about an accordion is that it's uh, a lot easier. Well, violin is not a heavy instrument. But it's certainly an uh, easy thing to, to come around. And that's also kind of like a, a versatile instrument. Easier than moving a grand piano, yeah, that's for, for sure. Yeah, for sure, sure. I don't know why, but my, um, my mother was very insistent that I play instruments that you can uh, that you could use for many different purposes so clarinet the accordion you could be in a band you could be in a marching band I could have been in a high school marching band you know so there was lots of opportunity to play so I, I 
I'm not a musician, but you know, you guys inspire me. I might, you know, go out and and get one from a pawn shop or something. An accordion and, and or a clarinet. A clarinet, clarinet or even yeah. an accordion. You, the accordions are like in little box ones now. The little ones like yeah, that. Well, I played a huge one when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, you bring it to to <laughs> rehearsal and you commit, and I'll write a concerto for you. How's that? <laughs> oh God, the poor people, their ears will burn off. I'm telling you, it would be terrible. But I think this is, you know, this is the whole idea of having a, a community orchestra. You know, while we're talking about clarinets too, that subject keeps coming up. Yes. Uh, I have in the library now a piece of music that I commissioned mm. from an old college friend uh, and it is a, a novelty number that features the clarinet section and if we ever get to perform it it will be a world premiere oh how wonderful so how I'm, wonderful. I'm hoping that we'll get some of those clarinet players to come out and uh, Perhaps we can program that. It's hard to know what's the best way to, to solicit people to, and to get people to join the orchestra. It seems like it somehow seems like the intentional things that we try to do just don't work out. Like for instance, we every course before every season starts, we put a press release out to the newspaper, which right. like, it's really duly run that we're looking for players and so on. The one person that we got for the, have gotten through that particular effort is Amanda, her percussionist, who was the person who was entering this particular uh, press release for the paper because she works for the paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's she, she's like, it's, it seems like it, for whatever reason, the intentional things that we've been doing have not have haven't been the one that paid the de the dividends. It's word of mouth. It's yes. uh, people looking for sure. us on online. You know, it's but that's there's sort of a. A sort of a gratification that goes, goes you're, to you're young. I mean, in terms yeah. of an orchestra, we're talking about a couple of years. I mean, you're not even around five years. Five years, okay, people start to, you know, maybe they'll respond to a newspaper uh, announcement or something, but otherwise. And we're very fortunate because EB is making more submarines. And did I read something like 400 new engineers will be here? So some of them play clarinet. <laughs> probably, yeah. Probably more than play more than play violins. But we could so, actually. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you'll get some. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll you'll probably get a, an influx of people that might be interested in doing that. And in the schools themselves, I mean, you probably um, do you get any people asking you of the parents or the older siblings of the kids who come? Is there some way I could learn how to play it uh, like a violin? Is that has that ever happened? Oh, let me think. Um, I think it has. I'm trying to remember who's who. Yeah, um, yeah well, of course. I'm sure. I'm sure along the line somewhere along somebody somebody has. Um, but we we for for a number of years we would have to say, well, sorry, we we only have the elementary school program, but we're hoping to have a middle school program. So hang on there. But now we do. Now we have the middle school program. Right. Yeah, we have a waiting list for it, though. So sure. that's why we're hoping to. We're hoping our you know concert is a big success. So we, so people turn out and uh, come to, come to our concert. We have a suggested donation, so which helps fund the program. Right. Um, so if our concert is a big su success, I just had an idea, Tom. <laughs> right if on. If you have a waiting list now, you can say we have openings for cellists. <laughs> but if you want to take violin, you'll have to take. You get in line. <laughs> right. <laughs> Immediate service for cellists. And well, if we could start our cello program, yeah, well, hopefully we will. Uh, we have uh, this. All this is a work in progress. Mm. Uh, we have grant applications out and. Uh, we, we hard is driven by, by finances, but the right. other thing is, uh, is it hard to find teachers for these uh, young people? Oh no, we've been we've had good luck. I okay. mean, there are, there are wonderful teachers out there, so we've had some wonderful folks. Um, you know, and our support has it's been very gratifying because the reason we've been able to offer these programs is because yes, the wonderful people that come out to uh, to attend our concerts, um, but also because the community has been so. Um, enthusiastically supportive of us and, and the various kind of uh, corporate grant funders have, have really responded very um, generously to the need for this kind of program in, in, in New London. So I just want to say a few words about that. We want to thank especially folks like the Kiwanis Club mm -hmm. of, New, of New London. Right. They were uh, one of our earliest and have been one of our most um, sustained um, uh, friends who have who sure. supported, su sure. supported us for sure. Of course, their mission is all about kids, right. the Kiwanis Club, and, and our programs you know, are about kids. So they have been wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful supporters uh, from the very, very beginning, as well as the Charter Oak uh, Federal Credit Union. They, mm -hmm. were, they, they helped us get going with the program for kids. They gave us the initial, you know, their initial seed money to start the, start the program, and they've right. been continued 
uh, to provide funds for us, um, the, the Charter Oak Federal Credit Union, for some reason, the message just clicked with, with them, sure. and, they, and sure. they have been just enthusiastic supporters from the, from the beginning. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the Chelsea Groton uh, Bank has also been a wonderful supporter of, mm -hmm. of, of ours as well. They're like right, right next door, I think, where we are right now in the studio. In the studio yes, in there Groton. is an office right there, not too far away. <laughs> yes. I should raise my voice so they yes. can hear it. So can yes. hear it. And of course, the Community Foundation of Southeastern Connecticut has been just a right. wonderful, wonderful supporter. They've been done everything possible for us from the very, very beginning. Anytime we needed anything, we just put in a grant request, and they've always, you know, they've always um, been um, delightful in their res their response. And and it it's, goes beyond that because when if we ask, the, if we talk, we can talk to them and say, you know, we may have a need for such and such. Is it possible? If it happens, you'll be able to, to find a way to, to help us out with this, and they'll check with their resources and mm -hmm. get back to us like right away. Right. You know, they're just it's it is, so it isn't just about. Of course, it's about you know we all need fun to have these programs, mm -hmm. but it's also having people out there that are just so so enthusiastic supporters. Well, I think there's yeah. a there yeah. is a general acknowledgement. Right. I mean, yeah. we were talking earlier off camera about still doing research, but there's a general acknowledgement I think among people, not only educators, that. Um, when you have young people, uh, this is just a wonderful thing to teach them. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole bunch of people out there that believe in sport, but I think that, um, you know, when you're 40 years old, it's pretty hard to play uh, linebacker football. When you're 40 years old, you can still play the, uh, you can still play a violin, a cello, a bass. You know, you can play any instrument, and you can love it the same way you did. You can at 40 years old uh, play football the way you did when you were 15 or 20. So I think there's a kind of recognition that you learn these skills, learning to play instruments, that carry with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, people are very, there are, they, you know, the, the message is getting across, people are responding, especially people, people in the community that run, you know, the programs for the arts and stuff, you know, they, they recognize this. So, and we're lucky in this area that we have a, a number of, of uh, programs out there like that. The Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition, which is a recently established mm -hmm. uh, organ organization in, in the area. They've been enthusiastic um, supporters of ours, and they've helped line up a grant for us from the estate. Uh, the, uh, was it the Commission of Economic and Community Development? Right. Uh, Commission on the Arts, if I have that right. Um, there was a, a, a request for a grant funding the call that, that went out. We would have not known anything about this ex if it wasn't for the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition because well, we have never been part great. of that state. You know, that's right. like without that, that cultural coalition, we just wouldn't. We just would have gone by us because we wouldn't have known. These kinds of community organizations are a real asset to everybody in the that's arts right. educational community. They mm -hmm. help us, you know, all get on the same page and. Get these things. We've had so much help um, for all these various organizations. Well, I think you have yeah. help because there's a recognition by people that um, this is this is an absolutely worthwhile thing for people to be involved in. Um, I think the corporations feel that it's a good, positive kind of message. You get kids wanting to play because their parents think this is wonderful for them to do. It's a get some out of the house in a very positive way. Gives them something they can. They can, you know, there is some kind of, um, I, you know, the only thing other people kind of push for is sport. But, you know, in my mindset, this is far better than any kind of sport a kid can play. And largely because the stuff that you learn and the ability to play, again, just, you know, you can be 70, 80, 90 years old, and you can still be playing an instrument. You're sure as heck not playing football or tennis or, you know, you're lucky you can get out to the golf course. So, I mean, these are the kinds of things that people recognize to be valuable. And yeah, our, we have kids who do both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, our group incorporates people uh, who are in their late teens mm -hmm. all the way up to and including age 70 and plus. Mm -hmm. No, it's, 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 it's just wonderful. And I think um, that you help poor kids who may not have as many options. Mm -hmm. And for them... You know, learning to play a violin is maybe so very different than what their friends are doing. But it's at the same time, mommy, daddy, whoever's in the family, obviously has to um, promote it for the kid because a kid is not going to play unless they get a little mm -hmm. nudging along the way and, and get satisfaction out of doing it. And I think that kids who come from poor neighborhoods, who this might be foreign, it's okay to play the violin. A violin is, is a good thing to do. 
Uh, and I think that's a recognition of the value, the value of music. And I'm, you know, it's not only, it's all kinds of music. And so cl introducing classical music to kids who um, may never hear it at home is a great thing for it to happen. And again, it's another it's another way out of you know out of uh, you know a less fortunate life you know life situation. Absolutely, um, it's there's no question about it that it offers it offers kids a sort of pathway that if they if they get they get the bug and they and they they and they're conscientious they're about conscientious it, right. and they're legit and they get enthusiasm enthusiasm the enthusiasm for it. It's it's a it's a direct pathway out, of, and not necessarily that as we were saying earlier, not necessarily that they're going to be professional musicians, mm -hmm. but on the college resume with your grades and if you have sure. this kind of passion for something, it really helps kids get in, get into top notch and colleges. A, and it really also, does. it's the whole link between music and, and math. Mm. So and reading and uh, yeah okay reading. because reading you know it's one thing to identify words it's another thing to identify words or symbols in a time frame mm. in music you have to do it within Very a certain quickly, amount of right. time so yeah. you have to be there yes and it that does, skill yeah. bleeds over into your, reg your regular reading everything oh it's it, the connections between uh, learning music and and being uh, getting better as a student or just or just or just endless they're just it's really important way you know way for us to help the kids out but getting back to the uh, sports it doesn't have to be either or we have no, we no. have we have we've had kids Do come in with football pads on you know they're sure. <laughs> it's, yeah it's yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah. little ones little ones they start football players <laughs> apparently they start football players really Pee little these days yeah, yeah. Pee -wee, right Pee -wee Pee -wee Pee -wee stuff yeah. exactly yeah. so I want to thank my guests for being here this is wonderful and I urge your support for this New London Community um, Orchestra and for the wonderful work they do to support little kids learning music. Remember, December 17th in New London, the concert at the Crocker House Ballroom in New London. Uh, I urge all of you to come out, bring your friends and family. This is a group worthy, worthy of your support. Um, and you don't have to live in New London to think it's just New London, it's just a wonderful thing for all over the community. So this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer for Community Culture Showcase. I want to thank you for joining us. I hope very much that you go out and see the New London Community Orchestra. And we hope to have a lot of other exciting guests for this fall and winter. Thank you for listening. <laughs>